Hi, Misha here, and we've been talking about modern guns for a minute. Let's slow things down and do a little rough riding. You've seen my model 1896 Springfield Craig Jorgensen rifle in several videos. And a couple of years ago, did quite a long video on this model 1899. Craig Carbine. This is the constabulary or college version. But this one just came in and I thought it was worth a video. This is a model 1896 Cavalry Carbine. And the more I looked at it when it came in, the more correct it appeared to be, at least for what it is and what it isn't. In fact, there's only one thing wrong with it that makes it incorrect. And that's kind of important when it comes to Craig Carbines because so many are faked outright or were professionally cut down by, say, Bannermans from Rifle to Carbine because it was a handier platform. And in the past, I always wanted the Constable Carbine because it just looks more correct. The Cavalry Carbine always looked like a sporterized job to me. But that's really kind of the wrong way to think about it. Honestly, this is what inspired Grandpa. This was the prototype of the American Sporter Rifle. We'll talk about it. And why these are so rare, how this one's correct and not correct, I don't know. You know me, I love my old guns. And as always, if you could, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support us, check out Patreon or hop into one of our live streams. With that, let's go back to the 1890s. The Craig was officially adopted in August of 1892. But it would not be until halfway through 1894 that it would go into production at the Springfield Armory. There were a lot of reasons for its delay, including lawsuits and really just tooling up because this was the U.S.'s first smokeless powder small bore high velocity gun. It fired a 220 grain bullet at roughly 2,000 FPS. Today, that doesn't sound like much. It was even a round nose bullet, of course. This is pre Spitzer. But back then, if it wasn't on the cutting, bleeding edge of technology, it wasn't too far behind. But the original Model 1892 was really not much more than an advanced prototype, or at least pre production field test series. If not in reality, yeah. And it would lead directly to this version here after several product improvements changes the model 1896 this was the first true production they would build over a hundred thousand and it had a lot of really great changes for one the 30 inch barrel had a better crown the cleaning rod or clearing rod under the barrel was eliminated the rear sight was improved the first of many times the rear sight would change to this elevation but not windage adjustable tangent. In fact, I should put this up here to be really more correct. The stock was made a little bit thicker. It was also given a better butt plate with more of a curve on the bottom to protect and a trap was installed hollowed out for a sectional cleaning rod and oiler and of course the famous Craig action single lug bolt at least primary lug interestingly it did have a bent down or angled down handle also locked into the receiver here is kind of a auxiliary sur surface notice the cutout in the wood around there wing style safety 
nice big caulking piece in case you have a misfire redo it and of course the famous capsule magazine that holds five rounds you can dump in and to go with that something that was very important for that day and time the magazine feed cut off with these models up is on meaning your magazine will not feed therefore it was effectively a single shot keep in mind this was replacing the black powder 45 70 18 73 trap door so the standard position was this flipped up keeping your five rounds in reserve and flip it down for emergencies at the time America was very concerned with that and this was actually a major deal one of the big disqualifiers they looked at over 50 gun models during the trials on Governor's Island and before but if they didn't have a feed cutoff, they were pretty quickly disqualified. They also didn't want tube magazines. So this was the original 1896. As you see, it's a very smooth action. And of course, as you see, it rolls over. And a very nice trigger on these. However, this is not a light or short gun. In fact, it's roughly nine pounds, and with its 30 inch barrel, has an overall length of right at 49 inches. Great for range with a good sight radius, good for the infantry, a few others. At this time, the Navy was kind of doing its own thing with the 1895, which we've done videos on, but that left the cavalry and a few other smaller forces that uh, needed something more handy. Thus today's gun is marked here. This is the carbine. Now this is a model 1896 but in actuality production on this variant began in late 1895 around November some say December and that's because there really was not a model 1892 carbine there were a few test guns maybe pre-production models but by the time they got around to making these for the cavalry who took kind of second fiddle to the ground forces the frontier army they had already made enough product improvements that we were going from the 92 to the 96 style Keep in mind though, at that time, the U.S. only needed initially about 15,000 Craigs, and so the cavalry needed even fewer. But yeah, these started to be filled, and in fact, the earliest ones are even marked 1895 on the receiver, later 1896, and then later model 1896. And this is significantly shorter and lighter, at least by comparison. It's around 41 inches. Now, we think carbine of this era, you look at Mausers, they usually had 18 inch barrels, give or take. This is longer, at about 22 inches, because America is still concerned with accuracy. But it's also concerned with weight for the cavalry, so they have a severely cut back forestock, no provision for a bayonet because they had sabers. And so the weight is dropped by about one and a half pounds, meaning this is roughly a seven and a half pound gun. So 41 inches long, seven and a half pounds, significantly lighter. Another change came with the cutoff. For the 1896 carbine, they flipped it, they reversed it. Down being feed cutoff on, up being off. That was just to accommodate the cavalry. When it's down like this, which is the preferred position at the time, it's just le less likely to get caught on things, snagged on things up. It protrudes more, but that was only meant to be when it was in heavy combat use. So you see the reversal of the cutoff first with this carbine here. Flipping these over, we see the same type of bolt and kind of relief in the stock. 
same magazine. Rather exposed barrel with our front side on the end. Note that the barrel does not have a step down. And note that there is a spring here in front of the barrel band. Kind of important little things when we start talking about fake carbines. But yes, these were in the production in 1896 and originally would have had a saddle, bar, and ring based on how they were carried at the time. They would go to this, the cavalry and then, of course, become very famous in 1898 when Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders would acquire some just before committing to the Spanish-American War. However, by the time the volunteer cavalry actually got their hands on the 1896 carbine, that's what the Rough Riders are officially known as, it was already out of production. Production stretched from, like I said, November 1895 until roughly November 1897. So a two-year run, not bad, and in which time they built just over 22,000. So not a tiny number, but considering they built well over 100,000 rifles, yeah, much smaller. So these would see service in the Spanish-American War. This gun, bad serial, is not a Rough Rider gun. It's, it's out of the range. It is in the range for carbines, but not in the Rough Rider range. But you'll notice it's missing a few things, including the saddle, ring, and bar. And the rear sight has windage adjustment, which is not right, because the 1896 had 1896 rifle rear sights, with the only difference that the latter was the same length, it's just the calibration was different. These would be calibrated up to 2,200 yards, whereas a carbine would be up to 2,000. So, yeah. Why does this one have a different rear sight? Why does the handguard look a little different? So on and so forth. Well, for that, we have to talk about the next carbines. So we can bring the Constable carbine back out, and as you see, this is marked 1899. Now, there was a model 1898 carbine, but just about 5,000 were built between August and October of 1898, and they were corresponding with the 1898 rifle, looking very much like this, but going to a new solid adjustable sight, the Dixon style. And the 1898 basically streamlined for production, also had a few things to make it stronger, cheaper, easier to mass produce, like I said. And it went to the 96 carbines reversed cutoff system, amongst other small changes. But they didn't make many, sorry, that was stiff on this one, 1898 carbines for a few reasons, including an attempt at a higher velocity, more powerful 30 US or 30 Army, or as we colloquially know it, 30, 40 Craig round. The Spanish American War, well, the US quote you know, won. And the Craig was sufficient. Heck, they were still issuing quite a few uh, 1873 trapdoors, black powder. So compared to that, a smokeless powder repeater was, was great. But the Spanish model 1893 Mauser in 7mm really owned it. So one attempt conducted in late 1898 was to up the powder, up the oomph, going from 2,000 FPS to about 2,200 FPS. And so the 1898 and the uh, rifle and carbine had a new rear sight calibrated for this. And they would build millions of the new round and try them out in 1899 and quickly learn that it was leading to increased wear on receivers, stress on bolt lugs. So after only about six months of experimenting with the new higher pressure round, they would revert back to the original 2000 FPS 
And so this caused a lot of differences with the sights and the chamberings and so on and so forth. Yes, I'm highly simplifying, but it does kind of explain why production would kind of stall out. And while the 1898 rifle would be the most produced Craig by Springfield of all time, building nearly 325,000, lasting from 1898 through 1904, like I said, the 1898 carbine would only be about 5,000. But the 1899 carbine here would pick up in September, give or take, of 1899, and they would build these on and off all the way through 1904 as well. And really the difference had to do with a new barrel band and a longer four stock, a little more reinforced there. And a new style of rear sight would soon come into use. We had the solid 1898 Dixon sight. But in 1901, we got this style here. Seen on both of these. The Buffington sight. Which was adjustable for windage with this lever here. Now granted, the 1898 was as well. And of course, elevation here. Again, carbine sights would go marked up to 19, in reality up to 2,000 yards, which, yeah, out of this gun is rather optimistic. There would even be another pattern, the 1902, which was a return to kind of the Dixon style, but it would be very short-lived because by 1903, they were back to the 1901 style for new production. And then, a short time later, they would actually retrofit a lot of older guns with the 1901, a process of kind of updating and retrofitting that had begun all the way back in 1900. And now we can really kind of talk about this gun. I will add, though, that between 1899 and 1904, they would build roughly 36,000 1899 carbines. So, yeah, more than the 96 and definitely more than the 98, making the 99 the most common carbine. It's also the safest if you're looking to try to avoid a fake because they didn't have an 1899 rifle. So with that, the pros and cons of this neat old gun. And at first I thought, oh, it's just a sporterized gun. I didn't think much about it when it walked in the shop. First off, no saddle ring and bar so i thought what the heck but typically if you have a cut down rifle stock which the constable had you'll have rifle swivels you know in the base here well this doesn't have a spot for one and never seems to have that carbines at least this style the cavalry carbine never had traditional sling swivels take that for what you will so if you see a carbine with this type of stock, it's got swivels, something's wrong. But why did it not have the saddle ring and bar? Well, that's because the 1880, the, the 1899 here did not have the sling, sw the bar and ring. Because by this time, the cavalry were using scabbards instead of the old bar connection system. So the ring was a nuisance hung up on things rattled around so all standard production 99s didn't have it and they started restocking and updating the 96 carbines to the new standard around 1900 1901 and at least 700 of these got new production stocks without provision for either sling swivels or a saddle ring bar system. So that was neat to learn. And it fits because this has the actual spring up here in the four stock holding the barrel band. Typically if you have a fake this band is pinned on. Now one of the improvements with the 99 is they went to a new style stronger barrel band and they string they 
lengthened all this out just a bit. So it's just a slightly longer sticky yatty bit. Makes sense. A little more protection, better spring. And so 1896 is updated with the new stock would have these features. They also would have this new style of handguard with this hump here to kind of protect the adjustment for the sight. There were a lot of upper handguards on Craig's. I believe six, seven official patterns and then several minor variations. Heck, there were variations in cocking pieces. There's kind of a straight knurled one. There are variations in the mag cutoff, in the safety. But of course, older guns, as they would go through rearsaling, would get the newer parts. So it's, actually, it's not very common to find guns with all their original parts. So take that as it will. Another neat thing about this one, the serial number is in the carbine range. When it comes to the 5,000 or so 1898 carbines, it's hard to tell because their serials are intermixed with the rifles. So those are often more faked than the 96s. And then of course, like I said, the 99s are carbines anyway. So the serial also kind of reinforced that this was originally a carbine. And another place to check is at the front. At the muzzle, the crown, on a factory gun should be rounded. Typically, when a gunsmith or even a store would cut these down, it would just be a straight cut crown. And this one does have a rounded crown. Now, I'm not saying a good gunsmith can't cut a barrel and round it. They certainly can. But it's another good indicator. Another is the front side itself. There are different heights and whatnot, but they should be brazed onto the barrel very neatly. Which this one is. It's like this one. Typically a cut down gun that's had the sight moved will be on a barrel band that's kind of pinned on, or just kind of sloppily brazed on. So the front sight looks correct to me. Compared to these. Now note on the constable there's a step down on the barrel. This is to take a bayonet. With the regular rifle the barrel has a slow taper to the front where the diameter out here is for the bayonet ring. The carbine has the same taper, but since it's a shorter barrel, it's thicker at 22 inches. So to make a bayonet ring fit, you have to have this small but important step down. If you tried to put a ring on a cavalry carbine, it won't go on. Not without a big hammer and a lot of uh, destroying of your muzzle. So yeah, the muzzle looks correct on this gun. But there is one issue with this gun that puzzled me for a moment. As I said earlier, rifles have a 2200 yard rear sight. Carbines have a 2000, just as on this one here. But looking at this one, it has a 2200 rear sight. Now, the fact that it has the later windage adjustable Buffington style, that's fine. That's a refurb that actually matches the stock perfectly fine. But why does it have this? Now, what's even funnier, it retains the C marked, carbine marked, so I'm going to roll it over here for you, sight base. So this puzzled me for a minute. What's going on? What's going on here? I considered maybe during a refurb, say sometimes just threw on rifle rear sights, because honestly the difference is just the markings. The actual length of the ladder is the same. It's just different calibrations. Well, unfortunately, the most likely answer is far less interesting. Craig carbine rear sights sell for a lot more money than rifle. So what some unscrupulous sellers will do, they'll pull off the carbine sight before selling the gun 
and put a rifle sight on. Yeah, the rifle sight cost him a couple hundred dollars at most, but the carbine sight re ridiculously goes for 500 even up to 1000 if it's an original 96 version. So that's probably what happened here, although I can't say for sure. I can say that the person this came from to me didn't do that, but beyond that, who knows? He he really was pretty unaware as well. So, oh well. The lack of the saddle ring is actually fine for this. This style of handguard is fine. The barrel looks fine. We do have the C-marked sight base. That's fine. It's just the incorrect sight leaf. Oh well. But there is a positive. For kind of every negative, there often is. I discovered something. The butt trap is not empty. Whenever you do mill syrup, guys, always check your butt traps. So, we have a kit inside. And it appears correct and complete, too. Three sectional rod, little oil applicator. The way these seat inside is kind of neat. There's little notches and things. Quite well thought out. And here's the sectional rod together, long enough for a carbine barrel for sure. Spot for a patch on one end. So yeah, that made me happy. I always uh, like finding those in compartments. Again, long time ago when I was doing Millsurp, I learned to check compartments and things. Often they're empty, but once in a while you'll find something cool or something disgusting. Kind of just depends. So all in all, for what I have in this, in the overall condition, I'm okay with it. Well, I look for a rear sight. I mean, I'll look, but I'm not going to pay hundreds of dollars for one. If I stumble across one, or maybe a sporterized gun with one, I'll take it. But I'm not going to steal, say, from a gun like this. It's otherwise right. That would just be wrong. It really is neat how each component has its own spot in the compartment. There are three small holes for the rod, and then there's a kind of shallower notch for the oiler in and you can actually open it with your fingernail it's not as bad as some although it was meant to be open with a uh, rim from a 30 40 craig round 30 u.s army so with that what was the future and fate of the craig carbine the craig would continue to see service of course in 1899, it would be used in the Philippines War or Uprising, Rebellion, and then soon after be part of the Boxer Rebellion over in kind of split apart China. And around the same time, 1900-1901, the older rifles were updated to the 1898 standard when rear sights would go back and forth. There are several variations. As for the carbines, we have a rough total of 63,000, and this is out of a grand total of 500,000 Craigs that Springfield were built, so not quite 1 to 10, with the bulk, more than half, being the 1899 variant. Most of the surviving 1896s were updated, and the few 1898s would kind of receive a special fate as well. The 96s would stay as cavalry carbines, but by the early 20th century, fewer and fewer were in active service, and it does not seem like any were still being used by the U.S. by the time of the Great War. The 99, though, had a little bit different fate, and that's where the Constable carbine comes in here. As early as 1900, there was an idea to have a carbine, so 22 inch barrel, that could take the rifle's blade bayonet. And it really got going with the Philippine Constabulary, established in 1902. In 1905, 1906, they requested and acquired their first 1899 carbines. And from there, they would very quickly retrofit them, as we see, not just to take the bayonet, but also to take a 
rifle sling and this was to suit the stature of the uh, officers over there and this was a good idea now over there the work was done in the Philippines it seems like between 47 and 5,000 guns were converted they were either 1899 carbines with a few maybe 1898s or over stamps but Springfield would also do some which this probably is here called college carbines or college rifles they would do just over 4,000 between about 1906 and 1914 1915 converting 1880 excuse me 1898s and 1899s mostly 99s of course with the same process it's said that the ones over in the Philippines were all but destroyed meaning the ones that survive in the US today are very 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 likely to have been the school guns made by Springfield but never say never there could be a few POD converted guns but that was the fate of roughly 9,000 they were converted into bayonet and sling mounted variants and the rest were just kind of continued on they would continue to update and standardize the Craig until around 1904-1905 but by that point production was ending for both long and short versions and of course its replacement was well underway and that would of course be the famous Mauser variant the model 1903 again from Springfield and whereas with the Craig the US was maybe a little behind the curve with the 1903 they were kind of right on point for one thing they were one of the first countries to go to a Spitzer bullet 30-06 versus the original 30-03 and for another they were one of the first to adopt the universal short rifle along with Britain instead of having a carbine barrel and a rifle barrel 30 inches and 22 they went to a 24 inch standard barrel giving it an overall length of 44 inches so not much longer than the carbine but just that much more effectiveness especially with the newer rimless more modern round so these effectively started going into the field in 1905 and production would really ramp up in years after of course there would also be the 1917 the point is but the time the US entered the Great War in 1917 the Craig was all but out of service that said the US did have some kicking about now what's interesting to me these seem to be rifles more than carbines it seems like the carbines had either been pulled from service or maybe given away so by 1917 the inventory seems to point to mostly the rifle which is interesting considering the combat of World War One but I will say for that I would strongly suggest seeing Arsenal uh, they've done a lot more research into actually using the Craig in the war more than I know so I'm perfectly happy to admit one I am not an expert in things and I'm not an expert in US small arms or the Craig in general but with this in I just thought it was worth sharing but it does not seem like any 96 carbines served in World War One at all and probably not even 99s seems like it would be the the 98 long rifle and that kind of gets us to the final chapter in the 1920s Craig's were sold off with the DCM the predecessor to the CMP and we come full circle to where we began how this inspired Gramps's sporter gun like I said I was always not sure about getting a Craig carbine because it looked like a sporter gun to me but that's the wrong way to think about it and I always thought of a carbine as looking more like the constabulary here but when the DCM had carbines they did very well they sold them off cheap with the 1920s and then the Great Depression and the 1930s, this was a great way to put food on the table in a handy, lightweight package that could get through the brush and the woods. But they didn't have that many. And so when the DCM sold out and other sources like Bannerman sold out, a lot of individuals got, well, ingenuitive and took rifles and cut them down and often bobbed the stocks like here and remove the sling swivels if they had them on trying to make a carbine like this and again professionally commercially other companies would officially 
cut them down. So these are sometimes called NRA carbines too. So this is really where the kind of the look for the classic American sporter comes from, the, the desirability of this gun. And therefore the Craig was a very, very common rifle and making the 3040 a very common cartridge in American homes and hunting camps for decades. In fact, it really wasn't replaced until you finally get to scopes and whatnot becoming more common because while you can put a scope on this, I've even seen people drill and tap the extractor, it's not the best way to do it. So that was kind of the limiting factor was just the, uh, the bolt system up here with the moving extractor. There's not really much of a area. There's no rear bridge for rings. So you're just kind of up here. And of course, the round, while perfectly adequate for the late 19th century, wasn't the most powerful in the world as we talked about. And the magazine feed system, kind of dumping in single rounds at a time, was a cool idea before stripper clips and chargers really took hold, but soldiers have many accounts of dropping a lot of perfectly good rounds on the ground just trying to drop them in, and I could get it because it's not the easiest thing. So once stripper clips became the norm, for example with the 1903, this new system was clearly superior, holding five, in some cases 10 rounds together in a clip, just keeps you from dropping them. They did try a version of the Craig with a clip guide, and it worked reasonably well, but it was a little too little too late. They were moving on. So yeah, after only about 10 years of production, nine years of frontline service, by 1907, most units were transitioning over to the 1903, and by 1917, only a few rear echelon training units, cadets maybe, uh, or just, you know, practice units had these. In fact, ammunition was getting rather scarce in America, at least in the military, not in the civilian circle. So, yeah, they would very much be out of service by then, being replaced by the 1903 and the 1917 which in turn will be replaced by the M1 Grand and even to some extent the M1 Carbine as time marched on. But even as the U.S. moved into some autos, the good old hunting Carbine would continue into the 1950s and 60s and even to when I was a kid. You saw a lot of sporterized Craigs. That plus their use by the Rough Riders has made the 96 in particular a very iconic gun saddle ring carbine and worth talking about I've done a full video talking about the constabulary carbine too if you'd like to check that out but uh, I don't know seemed worthwhile and like I said we've done a lot of modern guns recently so going back to kind of my first love of Milserp CNR so what do you think I'm curious do you like the rifle do you like the carbine more and if so do you like the kind of full stock constabulary or do you like the rather interesting cutback cavalry gun let me know and if you own one let me know too let's discuss and of course if you just happen to know where carbine rear sights at feel free to let me know that too I'm not gonna let it bug me but if i do stumble across one like i said maybe on a sporter i'll grab it but i'm not gonna filch one off a perfectly good gun like this that would be wrong Making one gun right at the expense of making another one wrong is just not, not, not how it's done, guys. Not done. With that, if you could, please do like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon. Check out our live streams. This is Misha. Catch you very soon. Pipe with something modern again next time.